So, you think you know circuits? You're wrong. You probably know that the power dissipated by a component in an electric circuit depends on the voltage across it and the conventional current flowing through it. It's important to state conventional here, as, thanks to Benjamin Franklin, electrons move in the opposite direction to what we generally consider current. But today, we're going to discuss how physically unintuitive that actually is. Ask yourself, if electrons move towards a power source, how can conventional current transfer energy away from that same source? And if an alternating current is constantly changing direction, how is it even possible that energy moves in one certain direction? Before we can dive into what determines the direction of energy transfer, we first need to talk about why the convention is the way it is. And it all comes down to a historical assumption. The convention we use today comes from the mid-1700s, when Franklin made the conjecture that current was the flow of charge, which it is. But at that time, he had no knowledge of electrons and the fact that they were negatively charged. So he assumed that the moving charges would be positive. So current would flow from the positive terminal to the negative one. By the time the electron was discovered in 1897, the idea was so well established that the scientific community decided it wasn't worth the effort to change the convention. So it still remains to this day, even though electrons obviously flow from negative to positive. So, how is energy transferred in a circuit when electrons are moving in a seemingly nonsensical way? It's because energy transfer is not dependent on current reaching a load. The flow of charge is what transfers energy, not the individual movement of electrons. Let us explain. Now, we are going to talk about vectors, but all you need to understand is that these two vectors are perpendicular, and if we wanted a vector that's perpendicular to both of these, it would look like this. The pointing vector, no pun intended, points in the direction of energy transfer, and it's measured in units of intensity, or power per unit area. Mu naught is the permeability of free space, which is just a constant, so don't worry about that. What we're really concerned with is this, which is the cross product of the vectors E and B. E is the vector corresponding to the electric field, and B is the vector corresponding to the magnetic field, which is perpendicular to the electric field. Now, taking the cross product of these two vectors simply gives us a third one, which is perpendicular to both. This equation is true for any combination of electric and magnetic fields, including light. We know that the movement of charge generates a magnetic field, so it also applies in any electric circuit. The electric field in a simple circuit is usually generated by a source, such as a battery. In this case, there is an imbalance of charge, or potential difference, across the battery. According to the pointing vector, we need both electric and magnetic fields for energy to flow. This is because, as we know, an open circuit does not dissipate power, as no current actually flows. When connected in a closed circuit, however, the electric field of the source channels through the wires and consequently pushes electrons along. This movement of electrons gives us our magnetic field. So now that we have everything we need to transfer energy, let's go back to the pointing vector and determine its direction. The cross product means that S is perpendicular to E and B. In this case, moving charge moves in the direction of the electric field. So by definition of the cross product, energy cannot flow in the same direction as charge. They're perpendicular. So, how is power being transferred? Looking at a section of conductor, the electric field inside the wire is in the same direction as that outside the wire, but it's much more intense, since the field is mostly channeled through the wire. The magnetic field strength will be small inside the conductor and will vary inversely with distance outside the conductor. We know from Ampere's law that the magnetic field goes around the wire as so. Therefore, it goes into the page here and out of the page here. Remember, as per the laws of electrodynamics, the electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular at these points. By taking the cross products of E and B at the same points, we can see that energy is flowing in to the wire. If we look at the fields around the battery, the electric field points in the opposite direction to how it would within the battery itself. However, the magnetic field has the same direction as in the wire, since the flow of current hasn't changed. This makes sense since energy flows out of a battery. The amount of energy the battery loses to the electric field is the same amount that the wires, and therefore the load, gain from the field. So, in summary, current is the mechanism that allows energy to be transferred through electric fields, but electric fields are what actually do the work. So how does alternating current transfer power in a circuit when the current is always changing direction? Before you watched this video, you probably thought that the direction of the current was the same as the direction of power transfer but now we know better. Every time the electric field changes direction, it causes the magnetic field to change direction too. 
So if we look at the cross product of negative e and negative b, it's completely unchanged, just like in normal multiplication. S is still perpendicular to both, so the direction of energy transfer doesn't change. And it's as simple as that. You have now been taught circuits, right? If you want to learn more, there's links in the description with more explanations. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe, and take a look at one of our other science videos. Thanks for watching.